Residents of Silver Spring Shores in Marion County, Florida are well acquainted with Cogan Grass Wildfire. Before 25 firefighter units were able to contain this fire, it burned 500 acres, damaged five houses, injured two people, and caused $100,000 in damage. This could happen in your community. My father and grandfather were in the turpentine business. We used to have a turpentine still at Hawthorne. This area where we planted these trees, they also were farmers. We, we grew lima beans here. And I saw some of it growing and I didn't know what it was. It didn't bother me un until after I uh, cut some pine trees. And then it just took off. And in some places it was uh, like uh, four feet high. It'll just spread like wildfire. It crowded out the, the pine seedlings I, I planted. I, the Kogan grass uh, it takes up the nutrients that would go into the little pine seedlings. This is not a very heavy growth in comparison to what it will be after the trees are cut. The, uh, the cost of producing timber is, is bound to go up wherever there's Kogan grass. You've probably seen Kogan grouse growing along roadsides and in open fields. It grows well in sunny areas, but also can grow in shade. It can tolerate a wide variety of soil conditions. Kogan grass is easy to recognize. It has yellow-green leaf blades that stand straight out of the ground with almost no stems. The blades stand four to five feet. The majority of the stems are underground and called rhizomes. The stems end in a sharp, pointy root tip. The leaf blade has a mid-vein or rib that's off-centered. And when you rub your hand down the outside edge, the leaf blade is sharp. The seed head is a narrow, fluffy white plume containing numerous seeds that are carried by the wind. There are other grasses that will have some of these same characteristics, but not all of them will have all the characteristics. Don't be fooled by this benign looking grass. According to the scientific community, Kogan grass is one of the 10 world's worst weeds, and for reasons other than its wildfire tendencies. Kogan grass poses more than just a fire hazard. It is very aggressive in lawns and landscaping. Because of its extensive root system, it is impossible to hand weed it. Mowing is difficult once it gets tall and thick. I sure wouldn't want this in my yard. Kogan grass readily colonizes open areas. Its aggressive nature excludes native vegetation. This creates a loss of habitats and food sources for native wildlife. Unless the shoots are very young, wildlife will not eat the grass because of its sharp edges. The challenge to controlling Kogan grass is getting down to, to this lower root system. And the roots can comprise almost 70 to 80 percent of, of the total amount to the plant. If you look right here, you can see that there's a lot more roots compared to the amount of shoots that are coming up. These underground stems are called rhizomes, and these rhizomes are the key in trying to control Kogan grass. These rhizomes are very tough and very woody and can be very, very hardy under Florida's harsh conditions. There are different control methods that have been tested for the control of coconut grass. Prescribed burning is used to reduce the accumulation of dead grass and to attempt to create a fire break. The problem though is that coconut grass responds well to fire. Fire is a stress that causes a plant to flower and set seed. It does not prevent the plant from continuing to expand below ground. Mechanical disturbance such as disking will provide some suppression, but when each inner node is cut, it responds by sending up even more shoots. Regular low mowing will prevent the plant from flowering, although the root system will continue to spread. There are no biocontrols to date, however, research is underway. Control with a herbicide has proven to be the only effective method. A glyphosate product, such as Roundup, is the only effective herbicide available from garden supply stores for homeowner use. Application is done in the fall before frost when the plant is moved moving food reserves to the root system. Glyphosate will move down to the root system at this time also. 
Glyphosate is applied to the leaves just to the point of dripping. Usually a second or third treatment is necessary for complete control. 98% control is not good enough. Allowing for enough regrowth before a follow-up treatment is necessary. The more leaf surface that the herbicide can penetrate, the better. Remember to follow the label on the herbicide container. The label is the law. Here we have an area that's been treated with uh, herbicide for the control of Kogan grass. And we see, we look like we have fairly good control. However, if we get a lot closer, we can see we have a lot of regrowth right here. And regrowth is the biggest problem with Kogan grass. And if we allow this regrowth to persist, we'll have a situation to my right where it has come, come back with a vengeance and we really haven't done a lot of good. Cooking grass does not respect property boundaries. Oklawaha Weed Management Area Partners discuss their commitment to controlling Kogan grass across common jurisdictional boundaries. Cooperative efforts like this one make for a win-win situation. Efforts like this can be started in your neighborhood. This video and informational brochures are available to better inform the homeowner and landowner about Kogan grass, the scourge of the southeast. Remember, as the saying goes, fences make good neighbors, controlling Kogan grass makes even better ones. For more information, please call your local county cooperative extension agent or county forester.